What is up YouTube? Welcome back and today I got a special video for you. So I did not get a chance to upload yesterday because I had a little bit of a technical difficulty with my internet service provider but for today to make up for that I'm going to drop two videos and for this video we're going to be talking about the seven best credit cards with high limits that you can qualify for if you've already done the due diligence and got your credit on point. So let's jump right into it not to waste any more time. So <clears throat> just as a short quick reminder this is how the FICO score is calculated so as we mentioned before we talking about 35% um, is your payment history your credit utilization is 30% the length of your credit 15 and the last two 10% are your new types of credit and the mix of credit <clears throat> so anyway jumping right into before well, before I look at these cards here I just want to remind you that um, a free tool you can use if you're not using already is Credit Karma. No, I'm not an affiliate or I'm not offering any, anything to sell here. I'm just showing you that this is a tool that I use that a lot of people recommend that if you want to stay on top of your credit, this is a good place to go to see what is on your credit. It does not show all three credit bills. I believe it shows um, uh, TransUnion and um, Equifax, I think. Uh, but anyway, it only shows two to, the, two to the three. But either way, it goes to good... Um, point of reference to look at to at least know what is on your credit and I do not use them for your credit um, points because it, it reports um, through the Vantage score system which most banks don't even use so that the score is pretty much worthless but I mean it'll give you a good ballpark but anyway um, like I said I want to jump right into showing you these seven credit cards um, so anyway if you decide to sign up for credit card you know kudos to you like I said it's a good point of reference and some and they'll even have recommendations for you so as you see like they'll they'll give you recommendations of different types of cards and things to a loans to a platform based on people currently um i guess similar to your credit profile that did get approved so there's a little bit of math there so jumping right over this is all on credit karma like i said i'll leave a link um to this particular page and to um, credit karma so if you want to sign up if you're not already it's free um, they also have a mobile app as well too so um, the seven best high limit credit cards right here I'm gonna talk a little bit about them and then I will get you on your way like I said, I'll keep it straight short and straight to the point right and again if you've already followed some of the guidelines I give you in my previous videos this is where you need to be and I would say I would recommend at least have one of these seven credit cards in your wallet now the reason for that is because most banks they're going to look at your credit profile uh, when you go to apply for other cards so if you already have a high limit credit card you have a better odds of getting a high approval rating or higher credit limit when you first sign up for a new credit card <clears throat> so and with that being said before i jump into it if you do have any cards currently that is in good standing and you haven't had a credit line increase i would say in between three and six months you should definitely be um, calling up your current banks you bank with and getting that increase because you don't want to have a $300 credit limit and then go apply for a brand new card because they're going to look and see you have low credit limits and most likely they're going to refer to that to give you your initial line of credit. So you, you want to start tackling all those cards that have those low credit limits and getting them boosted up. And of course, if you have a card that doesn't do increases, mm, yeah, you might want to think about getting rid of that. Um, but anyway, so jump right down the list here. Um, we're just going to go down the list. So we've got the Credit Sapphire Reserve Card. It's best used for premium travel and has a minimum credit line of $10,000. Again, these are not beginner credit cards like my previous video. Um, I'll leave a link if you want to check out that. Um, some beginner credit cards to start before you get to this point. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to just keep moving down the list here and then I'll get to um, the details behind each of them. Do you have the Credit Sapphire? The Chase Sapphire uh, preferred card, which is the entry level travel. So this one starts a little bit lower at the five thousand uh, dollar limit here. Um, then you got the city double cash. Um, I think I put this on my list before too, but uh, like I said, this one has it has cash back rewards and it has a minimum credit line starting at five hundred dollars. So just as the Chase Freedom Unlimited also starts at five hundred dollars with the bonus cash back. And the pedal two card, which I did, I do remember I did have that listed as well. The pedal one and pedal two card. Um, this is good for building credit, um, so it's not one that uh, I would say you have to get. But if you did get it from one of the recommendations in my previous video, definitely keep this one because it can go up to ten thousand dollars. So that is definitely one to hang on to. Um, 
like I said, it has the, the U.S. Bank secured Visa card. Now, typically, I would say secure cards really don't go that high, but this one does get up to $5,000. So again, if you have $5,000 and you need to get a higher line of credit, you can go right to U.S. Bank secure Visa and you know throw that $500 in there and then get a $500 uh, credit card. And then you have the Discover It student cashback card. Of course, so if you are a student, you can qualify for this. If you're not, then you know don't worry about it. But like I said, I would say at least one card on this list you should strive to get to, right? There's still other great cards up there. There's Amex cards if you um into those type of cards. Um, but like I said, I'll probably make a video on that at some point later. So let's jump into and kind of go over some basic overview of these cards. Um, just so you have a base understanding, I'm not going to read everything verbatim because, like I said, I know your time is valuable, so I want to keep it short, sweet, straight to the point. And, like I said, I will leave a link so you can come back and check this out if you want to go over this in more detail. So, talking about the first one here. Um, so, again, if you look at this, um, it says a Chase Satisfier Reserve comes with a high uh, minimum credit uh, limit, like we just talked about $10,000, right? Um, it also has a $550 annual fee. Um, but like I said, if you compare the annual fee to the rewards you're getting with this and the potential, I think this card has a maximum credit line of a hundred thousand dollars. So keep that in mind compared to that annual fee. I mean, that's peanuts. That's like having, um, a thousand dollar, uh, credit card with a five dollar, five dollar fifty cent, uh, credit line. Wait, I'm not saying, I'm not saying a fifty-five dollar annual credit line, man, my math sucks. But anyway. Um, like I said, so move right along. Like I said, I'll leave links so you all can go to check this stuff out. Like I said, it, it's going to give you all the benefits you would want anyway from um, a credit card with a limit that high with that annual fee. Right? And again, like I said, these are not beginner credit cards. These are credit cards once you've established yourself and you, you know, you probably, I would say you're probably in the 700s. This would be where I would say when you start looking at trying to get one of these cards. I think you need a minimum anyway of like a 720 or something like that. Um, it can vary, of course, because I'm certain if you got if you're in the 600 high 600s and you have a pretty good profile built up, you probably get approved. But you, we're striving to get the high limit, so you want to start at that 10,000 or be able to get that 10,000 dollar credit limit. Um, anyway, so the Chase Sapphire um preferred of course this one is slightly lower so this one would be like this one has a lot less of an annual fee 95 dollar annual fee here and this one also has a high credit limit of a hundred thousand dollars so this one has a little bit less on the reward side but the annual fee is only 95 dollars. so this is almost nothing and you're still going to build up those points but it's using it builds up a different point system than the other card so it's kind of like the um you know kind of like a junior version of the reserve the sapphire reserve all right, and the next one on the list was the City Double Cash Card. Um, this is one that's like, it's always good because you have the double cash back. So, and this one, you can use this for like gas and restaurants. So, you're going to be getting money back like all the time. And it has no annual fee. So, like I said, this is a win-win. Um, this, I think, can go even above, it says, even above the 40000 uh dollar credit line. So, like I said, this is another good card. This is one... Um, I would say, I don't, I don't know why I didn't get this, but this is one I would say I would get at least because there's no annual fee and like I say, you can still get a pretty, pretty high uh, credit limit and you get cash back on everything. Okay, absolutely everything. When you use that card, 2% cash back. So there you go. Um, you have the Chase Freedom Unlimited. So another Chase Freedom. This one also, again, has zero annual fee. Um this one i think it goes up to five thousand yeah okay so this one's limited up to five thousand dollars but again this one you can't get five percent uh cash back or five percent back on uh travel so if you somebody who likes to travel or you travel for business you know maybe you're in real estate or whatever you're traveling for like I say i would this is a car i would recommend because you're going to be saving that uh saving some money on the on the front end there and then you also get 3% uh, back on dining and restaurants, drug stores, and 1.5% back on everything else. Um, doo -doo -doo. Okay, next one, the Pedal 2. Which I'm, I'm probably gonna not going to dive into this one because, like I said, I made a video on this card already with the other beginner cards I recommend. But just keep in mind, this one, um, this one has a different approval process. So this one, actually, I think it links to your banking account, and it uses that to make that decision on whether or not they approve you and how much. Um, and this one does 
um, generally approve you a uh, higher starting than some of the other cards will because of how they use their system. But like I said, this one is uh, more of a beginner friendly card. Um, but like I said, you could do the pre-approval, which isn't going to do a, a hard pull at all. And like I said, this also goes up to ten thousand uh, dollar credit limit and one and a half percent cash back. Um, this is after twelve on-time payments. So you know, so after a year, you get the one and a half percent cash back. Um, so anyway, and then you have the U.S. Secure Bank card. I'm not going to spend too much time with this one. Five thousand uh, dollar credit limit maximum for this. Um, so like I said, it is secured. So that means you're going to have to give a deposit up to um, open up uh, this credit card here. And it's good for beginners as well. But it, like I said, it's going to have a larger potential credit limit. Um, and last but not least is the Discover It Student Cashback. Again, if you are a student, this would be um, a good card to have. If you're not a student, then you wouldn't even attempt to get this. But like I said, this one also has cashback, has zero annual fee. Um, and I believe you get, where is it here? You get up to 5% cash back. So on your purchases, um, it says then 1% um, in quarterly rotating category. So, and I don't have this card, but I heard some people don't like that because of that feature, because it, it's going to take more for you to keep up with to figure out which categories is currently at that 5%. So when it says like, if it's whatever purchases are currently in rotation, you're going to get that 5%. And then when they're out of rotation, you still get the basic 1% cash back basically so anyway with that being said this is another short video i hope i was able to provide some value here if you like the video go ahead and give it a thumbs up subscribe and hit that bell notification so you could be notified of more and like i said i'll be dropping a second video today to make up for not being able to drop one yesterday um but like i said other than that i will see you guys later this week if you have any requests any topics you want me to cover and deep dive more into Feel free to leave a comment. I read all my comments and I will make sure to get back to you and get that video um, uploaded so you all can get more information. So I hope I provided value and thanks again. I hope you all have a good rest of your day and enjoy.